Hi guys, it's Cherry. Hope you're having an awesome day. Hey, we're going to talk about wine complex tachycardia. So if you watched um, the other video about narrow complex tachycardia, you're going to find a lot of similarities here. Um, basically, if we have a cardiac patient, a cardiac patient, we're going to go through some of the same diagnostic tools to determine how we're going to treat the patient. So let's look at them for, for this type of emergency. Okay, first thing we're going to look at, this is one of those major decisions we're going to do, is, is our patient stable or unstable? Okay, um, and this, this is truly the thing that's going to drive our treatment. So again, an unstable patient is going to be one that has hypotension or an altered mental status or and an altered mental status. Okay. Um, they can have any other signs of poor perfusion. So if they have cyanosis, any of mottled skin, those types of things, things that show you that they're having poor perfusion, then we need to jump on this, okay? Um, and the last thing is chest pain. Like I said earlier in, um, in the other video, um, if my patient is having cardiac chest pain, that's my cardiac cells telling the brain they're in trouble, okay? And if my heart is hypoxic or my heart has some occlusions in it um, and it cannot function appropriately so if it's telling the brain it's in trouble it's at risk we're at risk for cart failure and that's going to be a, a lifelong thing so we need to try and avoid that at all costs so chest pain becomes one of those criteria for an unstable patient okay so again our rule of thumb Stable patients are going to get medicine because we have time to get it together to do that. Okay, if they're stable, we're, we're, they're not at risk. We've got a little time. However, if they're unstable, time is their worst enemy. And so we want to get them a treatment as fast and as efficient as we can. So that's going to be electricity. Um, it takes two seconds to pull out those defib pads, get them on your patient, and boom, we're ready to go. Okay. So then we're going to look at, now this is back to that five step approach as we're analyzing this rhythm. So this isn't rocket science, this isn't brand new, this isn't more stuff you have to learn. This is simple EKG interpretation, okay? So we're going to look at this. Is the rhythm wide or narrow? Okay, if it's narrow, then uh, we go to the other video, okay? If it's wide, we're going to talk about that here. Remember, wide is a QRS that's wider than 0.12 seconds, okay? The other thing we want to look at is, is it regular, okay? So, we're going to keep it simple. Again, here's the algorithm from the American Heart Association. Now, this is the 2015 guidelines. Um, they will be coming out with some new ones. I don't know how many changes we'll see on this, but we will see some an updated uh, algorithm and guidelines coming out in the next uh, several months but we're gonna we're gonna learn this for right now um, and uh, if there's any changes they probably won't be rock you know big huge changes and we'll, we'll quickly adjust okay so you see there's seven steps again this isn't hard we're gonna keep it simple we're gonna go through it one box at a time okay so one comp let's look at if our patient is stable. So we'll start at the green box, okay? We're gonna check the rhythm, we're gonna put them on the monitor, obviously. We're gonna check a BP, we're gonna check pulse oximetry while we're there, and we're gonna give them oxygen if needed. Right there we go, okay? Then, again, these, these patients are gonna have a heart rate of over 150. Um, because they're stable, we can start an IV, we have time, we can get a 12 lead EKG, which is gonna tell us a little more about this rhythm. Okay, I'm a little, little nervous with a 12 lead um, and I wanna make sure that, that we're capturing everything we need to. And then we can start thinking about some medications, okay? Our medication of choice for this patient is amiodarone. Okay, amiodarone is a anti-dysrhythmic um, and so it's designed to um, sort of calm down or numb those cardiac cells that are getting a little irritated and oftentimes it's because they're hypoxic okay so amiodarone is an interesting drug 
It is a detergent-based medication. So if you get really rambunctious and you draw this up really fast and you shake it around, you are literally going to have suds everywhere. Um, now I tell my patients this every, or my students this every year, and um, generally, before we get done with um, learning about rhythms and practicing these scenarios, somebody has amiodarone suds clear to their elbows. So keep that in mind as you're drawing it up. It's kind of a slow, gentle draw um, out of the vial so that you don't have a mess when you get done. Okay. Now what we're going to do with amiodarone on this stable patient is we're going to dilute it down uh, and we're going to deliver 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. Now what I like to do is put 150 milligrams in a 100 cc bag. I set the rate at 10 cc's per minute and um, we get that, get that put in. Now we can repeat that as needed and there's also a maintenance dose that we can look at um, giving our patients um, if this works for them. Okay, So we're going to start with the amiodarone. Now if at any point in time in that 10 minutes that we're administering this they become unstable then we shut that off and we go to the unstable algorithm which, which we'll talk about here in a second. Okay, So if it's regular and monomorphic, meaning all of the complexes look the same, then we can think about maybe even giving adenosine, okay, if it's regular. Um, generally the go-to is amiodarone regardless, but that's another consideration if, if you want to or if the amiodarone doesn't work, okay. And right there is our um, box that's going to show us how to treat this wide complex tachycardia that is stable. Okay. Now, how about for unstable? Remember, these, these patients don't have the time for us to be um, doing a lot of extra activities or a lot of treatment plans that are going to require some, um, some time. And sometimes starting an IV on these patients is a bit tricky because they are hypotensive and they do have some instability to them. So, we're going to start just like we did the other, look at the rhythm, blood pressure, oxygen, look at the SpO2, make sure they are unstable, and we're going to look very, very closely here if it's regular or, un, or irregular. So the regular ones are going to get synchronized cardioversion. Now this is going to hurt, and um, and you have to like not shy away from giving good treatment just because it feels wrong, okay? Um, we're, we're getting aggressive with this patient because this patient doesn't have a lot of time and we don't want to wait for them to die and then go into the cardiac arrest algorithm that we feel better about doing, okay? So right there is our treatment plan for this, okay? So if our patient's unstable we're going to do synchronized cardioversion on a regular unstable uh, rhythm. Okay. Now this is a little different than the narrow complex in the fact that we are absolutely going to start at 100 joules with this. So we're going to do the same that we did with the other. We're going to hit the sync button and we're going to uh, deliver that electrical shock that's perfectly timed um, at 100 joules. We're going to double that if we have to give a second one and we'll double that again and go to 360 if we have to give a third one to make that work, okay? Now, if I have an irregular rhythm, okay? If I have an irregular rhythm, that tells me this patient is very, very close to going into V-fib. And ventricular fibrillation is a pulseless rhythm. So we are not even going to take the time to sink, okay? If I look at this, it's irregular, it's fast, and it's wide and my patient's showing signs of poor perfusion, I'm defibrillating them at 360, okay? We gotta get this turned around before it gets really bad. So that's a quick, um, quick decision, and you're just gonna charge it to 360, deliver the shock, and hopefully to see this, see this go for the best, okay? Does that make sense? So, unstable patients. Regular synchronized cardioversion, starting at 100. 
irregular defibrillating. Okay. okay, whoops, I have one more little thing down here. Okay, now if we have IV access available, if it's there right there, we can consider sedation. But if it's not immediately available and my sedation is not immediately handy and my patient is unstable, I'm going to go without it. I can go in later after the defibrillation and give them some Versed, which will help them forget and not remember that at all. Uh, and I can give them some pain meds to help with that. Um, you would be surprised what giving that sedation and pain meds after will still do for your patient. Okay. All right, I hope that's making sense. Now again, here's your. Uh, I'm showing you the Life Pack 15 uh, because this is the one the one I'm used to. It's the one we use in lab a lot. Uh, there's really only three main um, monitors out there: the the Physio Control Life Pack, the Zoll, and then Philips has made a monitor. They no longer do. They discontinued that last year. So um, hopefully, but they all work kind of the same. Okay. So once you get your monitor. To synchronize CardioVert, we're going to find that sync button and turn it on. Now we'll have our pads on our patient, okay? Our, our defibrillation pads. You'll see the rhythm tacking along, and then you'll start to see triangles that appear at the top of the QRS of each complex. When you see those triangles, that tells you that this monitor is ready to deliver that shock at exactly the time the ventricles are depolarizing and that's what we want we want to like like depolarize all of those cells and let that heart start back up with the SA node in control okay the other thing we have to do is make sure that we select the right energy to do that so with our wide complex we're going to start at a hundred joules okay if that doesn't work we'll do it again at 200 and if that doesn't work, we'll do it again at 300. Okay. Okay, so in conclusion, we got some decisions to make. Is my patient stable? Is my complex wide or narrow? Is my rhythm regular? And do I have an IV already available to me? Uh, because that, that will give us some more options that we may not have. It's three really simple decisions to come up with a really important treatment, okay? I hope this helps. Here's some pearls for you. Um, always treat your patient and not your monitor. Always, always, okay? And the last one is never, never delay cardioversion or defibrillation in a patient that's unstable. They don't have the time and we don't need to take it from them. I hope this helps, guys. Have an awesome day. We'll see you soon.